Hey, Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Well, we've talked a lot over the past month or so about planets visible in the evening sky, especially Mars, that's had its best appearance for the year in early October, and also Jupiter and Saturn. Occasionally, though, it's important to realize there's an entirely different part of the sky visible later in the night, specifically in the early morning pre-dawn sky, and there's often a lot of interesting things happening there as well. Now, sky watching doesn't need to be an all-night activity, and there's really rarely an instance where you need to stay up to see something cool all night long. With things like Orion and other seasonal constellations, you just have to wait for the right time of the year to see it in the evening sky, and there it is no sleep lost. Occasionally, though, there are things like meteor showers and some comets and even occasionally planets that you have to set that alarm, get up early, look in the pre-dawn sky and see something special. Well, that's the case this week and next for the planet Mercury. Mercury is called the elusive planet, not because it's particularly hard to see, but because you have to have the right timing to see it easily. These chances don't come around every month, and this week and next will be your best chance to see Mercury for the rest of the year. Mercury will be at its best on the morning of November 10th and reasonably easy to catch in the days surrounding that. Here you can see it rising in the east on the morning of the 10th. But what makes this a good time to see Mercury? Well, it's a combination of several things. How high above the horizon is it? The planets Mercury and Venus are inside Earth's orbit which makes their appearance in the night sky a little different than Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Like those planets, they'll still look like points of light and appear quite bright at times, but because they're closer to the Sun than Earth, they never appear very far from the Sun. Well, let's zoom out here and see why that is. You can see here the orbits of Mercury and Venus, and if they're on the evening side of the orbit, we see them setting after sunset. But they won't be up for very long, perhaps four hours after sunset at the longest for Venus, and about 90 minutes for Mercury. As the Earth turns, we'll lose sight of them soon after the sun. Now we can also see the outer planets low in the twilight sky, but they can also appear opposite the sun in the sky and visible all night long. But you'll never see Mercury or Venus in the middle of the night. It just isn't possible because they're inside Earth's orbit and so they don't appear very far from the sun. Currently, they're both on the dawn side of their orbits, so we see them rising before sunrise. Mercury started off the month rising about an hour before sunrise, and on the 10th, it'll be up over 90 minutes before sunrise. Venus will be leading it up close to three hours before sunrise. You can begin to see brilliant Venus rising. Another thing that can change a lot is how bright a planet appears. And a major influence on that is the phase of the planet. Because Venus and Mercury are inside Earth's orbit, we can see phases of these two planets. As they go around the sun, we see them illuminated from different angles. This doesn't happen noticeably with Jupiter and Saturn. They always appear full to us. And Mars can exhibit a gibbous appearance, but we'll never see a Martian crescent from Earth. A small telescope will reveal the phases of Mercury and Venus pretty easily. And in the case of Mercury, the phase can change rapidly. Mercury was essentially in between the Sun and Earth on October 25th. And just two weeks later, it has vaulted up into the dawn sky. A few days ago, it was only a quarter illuminated and deep in the dawn glow. By the 10th, it will have quadrupled in brightness and increased its phase to be over half lit, already rounding the curve of its orbit. Speeding around the sun once every 88 Earth days, you can see why it's named for the swift-footed messenger of the gods. In fact, for centuries, it was considered to be two different objects, called Hermes, the Greek name for Mercury, when it was visible in the evening, and Apollo, when it was visible in the morning. It wasn't until the 5th century BC that it was shown to be one and the same object in the sky. 
One other special feature of these planets being inside Earth's orbit is that from time to time they pass directly in front of the Sun as seen from Earth, an occurrence called a transit. The most recent transits of Venus happened in 2004 and 2012, and it'll be another 93 years until the next time Venus transits in 2117. Transits of Venus only require solar glasses without magnification to see. Transits of Mercury occur more frequently, but these usually require magnification through a safe, filter-equipped telescope. We had transits of Mercury in 2016 and 2019, but the next one isn't until 2032. The final thing that can really affect how visible Mercury and Venus are is the tilt of their orbit relative to the horizon. Just a month ago, at the beginning of October, Mercury was at the farthest point from the Sun on the sunset side of its orbit. But because its orbit was at such a low angle to the horizon, it was barely visible in the Chicago evenings and other mid-northern latitudes, and was hardly worth looking for. Let's take a flight, though, to the southern hemisphere and see how Mercury looked from there. From Australia, it made a great appearance in early October, with the angle of the orbit almost perpendicular to the horizon. So your chances of seeing Mercury might depend not only on when you look, but also where you look from. So several things have to line up for a good view of Mercury, but because it orbits the Sun so quickly, we get several chances a year, generally about three in the morning and three in the evening, for things to line up just right. Well, this week, we finally hit the jackpot. So check the weather, set your alarm for the day around the 10th that looks clearest in the early morning, and either bundle up or find an east-facing window with a clear view and take a look. Venus will be easily the brightest point of light, and from mid-northern latitudes, a little below it and to the left will be Mercury. The earlier you look, the brighter Mercury will be against the dawn glow, but also the lower in the sky it will be. Binoculars will definitely help, especially as it gets closer to dawn. About a half hour before sunrise might be the sweet spot of sky brightness and Mercury's height above the horizon. On the morning of the 10th, the moon will be high above the planets, but it will be joining Venus on the morning of the 12th, and it will be a beautiful thin crescent in between the two on the 13th. The star Spica in the constellation of Virgo is also joining the planets as well. Mercury will be showing up in the evening sky in January, but it won't be quite as easy to see then or as attractively grouped with other bright objects. So I challenge you to get out and see it for yourself this week or next. It's a speedy planet, but now is a great chance to catch it in the act. And if you catch Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars before you go to bed, and Mercury and Venus before dawn, you'll have seen all five classical naked eye planets in one night. And at least for me, that's worth losing some sleep over. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and keep up to date with everything going on in the sky. Also, follow the Adler Planetarium on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Happy planet hunting, and we'll see you next week.